Uh, hi, uh, in this talk I will go through uh, compressed sensing applications for image processing. Uh, I will uh, mainly focus on L1 minimization problems or ISTA problems. Uh, I call all these uh, ISTA type algorithms there, L1 algorithms or ISTA algorithms. Uh, such as basis person denoising or lasso. Uh, I talked uh, about this uh, before, uh, if you remember, at the coffee hour. Uh, I talked the first part and the second part I uploaded on YouTube because I promised in the first part that I will talk about this. And then I shared all these links, the video and uh, the presentation slides before with you. They are here. Uh, so let me open uh, this page from the previous presentation. Let's go to page uh, yeah, 41. So uh, in this, in general, we are interested in this problem. Uh, here, uh, L0 norm counts the number of zeros, so we want to have a sparse solution to this uh, equality. Uh, the length of y is uh, smaller than the length of x. Uh, then it is called compressed sensing, because we have a less number of observations than uh, the length of our unknowns, the number of our unknowns. So this is an ill-conditioned problem, uh, but if x is sparse, uh, we can sometimes recover x perfectly, or sometimes, uh, other or other times uh, we can recover very accurately. So uh, after relaxation with L1 norm and writing in an unconstrained form, uh, we obtain this, and we can call this unconstrained version BPDN or LASSO uh, which are different but uh, they are closely related uh, if you want to see the exact uh, difference uh, we can have a look at this page this is SPGL1 solver website uh, it solves all these uh, problems so it can have uh, Okay, I think I will talk about this later, not now. This SPGL1 solar can have complex or real inputs. So, uh, let me talk about my uh, main purpose, as I shared a long time ago. So, I'm mainly, I am interested in this paper. In this paper, a new uh, uh, ISTA algorithm is proposed. Uh, I think its nickname is NC ISTA. Maybe it means a new converging ISTA. I'm not sure. So uh, it has a convergence analysis and it proposes some extensions in the in the conclusion here. And I, I know that the author uh, has been working at the company for several years. So I think these extensions in the conclusion are still open problems. And uh, these extensions can definitely yield journal papers, such as this one, such as this paper. But however, uh, let me open the slide again. Uh, however, uh, as a starting point, uh, I plan to just do image processing application of this algorithm and integrate this algorithm with another well-known solution, uh, which can lead to a conference or a letter paper. So uh, these are my steps. Uh, as a starting point, I plan to do this. And as a second step, it will be good if we can propose a new uh, like algorithm. Uh, so, OK. Uh, so, as I said before, uh, the applications of uh, sparse signal recovery, compressed sensing techniques uh, can be for image processing and millimeter wave wireless channels. However, uh, I choose image processing 
because I believe it will be easier for Pontus and his research group to get a handle of image processing concepts. The basics are easier to grasp and there are many online codes. They have been sharing their codes online longer than our field, wireless, channel, wireless networks field. You can find many uh, online codes. Uh, so for some reason also they don't do Monte Carlo iterations, although it's possible to do so, but they don't do. Uh, when we have some random matrix somewhere, for us usually it's the channel H, we do Monte Carlo iterations, but uh, although they have a random, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they have random matrices, uh, they don't do Monte Carlo uh, iterations for some reason. I'm not sure. Uh, so in fact, uh, it doesn't have to be wireless channels. There are many application millimeter wave wireless channels. There are many other applications in wireless channels that we can use sparse signal recovery or compressed sensing techniques. Uh, so uh, I want to say my background in image processing is not so irrelevant. Uh, like all EEE uh, electronics engineer people, we take a uh, fundamental courses during BSc. Uh, these courses are fundamentals for both uh, image processing, video processing and wireless networks. And during MSc and PhD sometimes I took uh, many uh, signal processing lectures which are again kind of basics both for image processing and wireless networks but sometimes I took directly uh, uh, image processing lectures such as this one, this is pattern recognition, even we use neural networks at that time during PhD. Uh, and uh, even if we do uh, take a specialized course in wireless networks, the math behind is very similar to image processing. And, there are... and finally, uh, I had a conference paper on ISAR uh, for is an outcome of an uh, MSc lecture project. So I'm not so irrelevant, uh, I can manage it. Uh, so in this talk, I will show uh, four MATLAB examples. Uh, and I won't show one Python example. There are also Python examples on the internet. It needs GPU. I executed this code until it asked for a GPU. Uh, and then I stopped there. But I think it's convertible to CPUs. I don't have a look at it yet. Uh, so, uh, let me open this NCISTA paper first. I'm basically interested in experiment one. Uh, in this paper, the author benchmarks its solution with two well-known ISTA algorithms, two-step ISTA and fast ISTA. Uh, the paper and the codes are written for real values, real valued inputs, but it is okay. Uh, to run it for complex values and extend it to complex complex values, and uh, in throughout the uh, presentation, I will use normalized mean square error uh, as a benchmark. So the lower NMSC, the better the accuracy of the estimation. It is basically uh, in dB 10 log 10 uh, norm square of difference between the uh, ground truth in image. Processing, I think they call it ground truth mostly, the original image. Uh, the difference between ground truth and the estimate divided by the norm square of the ground truth. So let me open the paper. Uh, or, uh, okay, uh, so I, I won't go into the paper much because, uh, as I said, I will mostly focus on. Uh, the MATLAB application, so I will open the uh, codes. So here uh, the author is uh, generating random signal uh, which is sparse. This is the unknown X signal. As you see it is sparse, there are many zeros in it. And this is the projector H matrix which we know. Uh, somehow it is very uh, deterministic uh, something about filters I'm not sure why so it is only two values and diagonal 
and here you see the noise power it's very small uh, this noise power level is small for wireless networks we have uh, higher noise power levels but in a image processing field I see this noise power uh, almost everywhere so for them I think it's acceptable for us uh, it, we can still apply these algorithms in wireless networks uh, here I show a paper which used denoising based uh, approximate message passing uh, as a denoiser it, it uses uh, uh, it uses what is a denoiser I cannot remember now was well, a denoising based uh, AMP it combines AMP with a denoiser uh, it's learning this L is for learning because it use uh, convolutional neural networks uh, so AMP is uh, as I talked in my previous talk AMP is a next step for after ISTA uh, so I, I want to run this algorithm now quickly because it runs very quick so noise level is 1 e to the minus 2 uh, so maybe I forgot no need for this so uh, the result is not so bad uh, we can run it again as I said for some reason uh, they don't do Monte Carlo iterations so the results are not bad but if we increase the noise uh, make it 0,1 uh, the results are not so good it's uh, worse now uh, so noise power has a significant uh, effect on these algorithms it is it hasn't increased too much from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01 for uh, for us it is not a big increase uh, but uh, for them it is a very big increase uh, so I will uh, compare uh, benchmark this algorithm uh, with uh, a couple of other algorithms such as uh, I open the presentation Bayesian comp compressive sensing uh, it basically uses the Bayesian approach that we use in the competition uh, so I want to show the figure 2 in that paper so here is the original signal here is the reconstructed signal with uh, basis pursuit it's not basis purpose pursuit denoising but it is basis pursuit only and this BCS is the proposed solution so is these are actually the same things I just showed uh, they're just shown in spike version they can be also displayed as uh, directs but here as you see uh, uh, the VP NMSC is higher than the BCS NMSC and the speed is higher uh, so I will benchmark uh, the NC ISTA output with this BCS output So before benchmarking, uh, I want to show uh, this. Uh, okay, I just forgot uh, the results you saw were not so good because n number of uh, compressed sensing, sensing uh, observations, sorry, number of observations was equal to the length of the unknown vector, n equal to k. So that's why it didn't perform very well. So if we increase the uh, the number of observations even for 0 0.1 it will perform very well Oops. so oh interesting it didn't perform very well I mean yes if we need to do Monte Carlo it's not very well but if we increase decrease this noise it will be very good
So as you see, it's almost perfect. So if the noise is low and the number of observations is higher than the signal length, uh, the performance is quite good. But if we increase the noise or if we decrease the number of observations, uh, the performance is not so good. Yes, if you do both, if you also increase the noise. Uh, And the performance is now horrible. But uh, we will see that uh, BCS doesn't have these advantages. BCS has only one advantage. It uh, needs, for some reason, I don't need the paper, it doesn't work for uh, rectangular inputs, 60 by 50 or anything. It works because I think positive definite, definiteness. Uh, and also, well, other than this, uh, it doesn't have any other problem. So I, I see the results before here. For uh, 50 by 50, uh, NC ISTA has this performance, whereas BCS has a very good performance. It's much, much better. Uh, when uh, the input is not square, BCS doesn't work. And uh, when I execute NC ISTA with uh, that SPGL1 solver, I see that the uh, basic uh, BPDN performs better. As I said, uh, BPDN required linear programming solvers, uh, so ISTA is faster, less expensive, but uh, the performance gap is huge. Uh, so, what I'm trying to say here is that. Uh, Again, the value of NC ISTA is uh, the theory, I believe. Otherwise, there are many more solvers in the literature that solve uh, much better than NC ISTA. Uh, let me see if I need to show you something with... Uh, okay, I can show you the original program of BCS. So this one is the original program. Uh, so as you see here, it is a sparse. The length of the unknown is 512, whereas the number of observations is 100. And for some reason, uh, for each observation, there are 20 spikes. That's the assumption. And again, uh, the author is creating some random uh, not again, sorry, uh, uh, this time the author is creating a random projector and the noise is 0 0.1 for instance, let's see if it will work uh, for this noise level or not. So uh, the performance is quite bad, but if we increase, decrease just a little bit, uh, the performance is very good. Uh, so I, I just want to share this. Uh, uh, in fact, I mentioned this a uh, long time ago in one of my papers, which I could publish only shortened version of this. Here in this talk paper, I talk about numerical correctness. Here I stress that uh, if you present our results over only a certain range of parameters, it won't be a, a numerically correct approach to do thing to do because really many parameters, combination of parameters have uh, very strong effects on uh, the results. Uh, I didn't write this on the paper explicitly in 2013 but even in 2012 I told to the research group I was working at at that time I said we should share our quotes online. So at that time uh, quote sharing online was not so popular, later it became popular. Uh, so, I mean, I, I really uh, try to be fair in my numerical results. Uh, I usually cover a lot of parameters. I scan a lot of parameters. I don't put only uh, results based on some. Anyway, uh, so this is what I wanted to mention. So now uh, we can have a, a look at complex valued uh, MRI results. 
So my point was my only point until now the value of that NCIS ISTA paper is its theory. Now let's have a look at complex valued MRI results. Uh, so I first open the complex image input for the NCIS ISTA. Um, so here uh, we load the complex image data and we can see this image data by executing this line. This is the uh, complex valued uh, MRI input. So I, uh, like we had before, I create a random H matrix. I create the noise. Uh, here I, I, uh, I make sure noise power is relatively minus 20, 20 degree compared to this H times X. It is similar, almost close to multiplying with uh, 10 to the minus 2, like sigma is equal to 0 0.01, uh, but this is more accurate. And sound them, multiply them and sound the noise and run the input. And let's see how uh, this uh, new ISTA will perform. It takes a while because of this uh, Z limit here. There's somewhere Z limit here. Normally the algorithm doesn't take this long. Oops, uh, I removed that already. Okay, in the original code you can find a Z limit. So yes, it takes some while. I think it takes three and a half minutes. I can uh, run, uh, I can just cancel this and uh, open this one, which I did before. So compared to those these two well-known algorithms, alpha 0 and alpha 1 are different for the proposed algorithms. Uh, so this is the original image, this is the masked image that is uh, image multiplied by H and uh, added noise is added. As you see it's quite messed up but the recovery is not bad and the best one is this, the proposed solution by, all, by the authors. I also saved uh, the MSE values. So the best solution is this one. So authors also talk about this importance of alpha. It also increases the speed. So it's not too bad. Uh, uh, normally we would like to see around minus 20 dB actually. It, it is like almost perfect then. Very good. But uh, so I want to talk about two issues here. Let me go to... My notes, what I want to talk about. I know what I want to talk about, but I need to... I want to check my notes again. Yeah, it's right here. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are two issues here. So we have BCS and NC ISTA. They are both complex solvers, but our image is not. Uh, they are both uh, sparse solvers, but our image is not sparse actually. But it can be sparse, as I did in my previous talk on YouTube. In other domains, we can have sparse uh, representations. So if you take the wavelet transform, we can have a sparse representation of that MRI. So normally, in MRI application, we will we should take a sparse wave transform, and also take the FFFT of the after that. So if we have a sparse solver, we have to do SW2T to have sparse I. If we don't have a sparse solver, whether we have a real image or a complex image, we have to take FFF2, and we need to multiply H as dot product. And this H has to be zeros or ones for subsampling. Whereas I showed in earlier, H was a random matrix. So for virtual data, it's okay. Whatever application you X assume, that is valid for H times X, you can use it. But for MRI, there is no such application. So I checked many codes, many papers. 
all of them does FFT2 for subsampling and age that times uh, this FFF2 of the image and age is zeros and ones. Let's say this is for subsampling because uh, zeros, uh, if we so we are picking only some elements out of i, so that is subsampling. I will also show it. Uh, so I also checked for blurring uh, of image images, and for blurring, they don't also have h times i or h times ff of two i. They have different. I mean, h times i, uh, which I will show results out of for this h times i, is not valid in image processing. It should be h dot times ff two of i. And if we have a sparse solve, we should have. Uh, will transform of it but just for simplicity today uh, I will uh, show you uh, the results assuming uh, H star I is a valid assumption in MRI so I, now I want to show how we can have sparse representation in the wavelet domain uh, So uh, here uh, we have original MRI and its uh, samples and here I take a wavelet transform of it and uh, we have four matrices. These four matrices can be used to reconstruct the original image. Uh, the uh, accuracy is almost perfect. So this is the comp uh, so this uh, first matrix is the compressed version of this original MRI. Compressed version means it has less number of samples. As you see here, the number of samples is less. Or uh, when we say size LL, it is uh, lesser than. Uh, the original image. So as you see by taking with a transform we have a complex version. So uh, here I reconstruct it by using uh, this compressed version as I mentioned and I can get almost this same uh, image. Uh, so what we can do is, for this wavelet domain, the, the image in the wavelet domain, or equivalent to the compressed image, we can null some of those elements. And we can choose a threshold such as the mean of that compressed image. So I create a sparse, the same as a, a compressed image, because I will make this sparse. I will make uh, the element smaller than threshold, which is the mean of the compressed image, zero. And I will measure the sparsity of this sparse ratio of this new image. I will then reconstruct the image from this uh, sparse compressed signal. I will measure uh, the NMS CE. So as you see, uh, the uh, reconstruction is not so good. The error is high. Sparsity is kind of high, 60. Let's see if we can reduce this part. Uh, can we get a? We can get a. Whether we can get a better uh, reconstruction result or not. Now I choose my threshold as lower half of it, half of the previous case. So again, I measure the sparsity. I reconstruct and uh, plot here. By uh, reducing the sparsity from 59 to 51, that is, uh, I don't know all more. I know less elements, so the NMSC is increased significantly. So we can find some better threshold to have an acceptable NMSC. So that's how we can sparsify this non sparse image in the wavelet domain. So this is the summary. When we sparsify, we can recover it with this. 
accuracy but uh, this if it sparsifies less uh, we can recover it better and it can continue uh, so we will still have a spark so uh, that's what I mean uh, for these algorithms that I will show uh, to be proper they need to uh, be shown in wavelet domain etc etc but I won't do that for simplicity so as a benchmark uh, I will compare uh, SPGLV, SPGL1 uh, solver, which solves BP, BPDN, and lots of problems, can take uh, real and complex inputs. And uh, as I did before, uh, BPDN significantly performs better than uh, NC ISTA at all cases. I don't know if it is worth to do NC ISTA. Yes, this is less heavy algorithm, but uh, the performance gap is too high. Uh, let me see if there is anything else I want to say. So for uh, complex and real valued uh, benchmarking, uh, so we cannot be so sure because as I said, I don't take a proper wavelet transform or an FFFD. I will do them later, uh, but uh, my feeling is that it will be there will be a similar results. This anyway, so I don't want to talk about this because it's not a, a proper uh, benchmarking. So I want to show uh, another algorithm, which is uh, which does MRI application properly. So it. It uses this well-known uh, BM3D uh, denoiser with approximate message passing algorithm. Uh, BM3D is block matching and 3D filtering method. Uh, so the authors for the first time combine these two algorithms together. And this is for real images, this is for complex images. Uh, so I will show you what I mean by subsampling. So here you remember the original uh, MRI image, I guess. So this is a subsampled MRI. So we can recover uh, the image very well out of this subsampled uh, MRI. So this uh, QRandom is somehow popular. There are other uh, masks, they call it masks, uh, canonical uh, mask, uh, what else? Um, Cartesian, no, Cartesian uh, mask, uh, radial based mask. Uh, if this number is 30, that means uh, they take more samples, so your accuracy will be higher. And as I said, the relative noise power is minus 20. It is like that sigma in front of noise is 10 to the minus 2. So it's very common. We see, I see this uh, noise level everywhere. So it works pretty well. And it works pretty fast. Uh, as you see, uh, for complex data, we need more iterations. BM3D was originally written for real inputs, but uh, it is it can be extended to complex inputs. And for instance, in BM3D, they uh, share a max file you cannot open the BM3D MATLAB uh, C++ code. In this paper, authors also share P codes. It's again, you cannot, this is a MATLAB file, it's blocked. These are all uh, P files, we cannot open them. So the results are here, actually I saved them before. Okay, what happened? Okay, they are here. So these are the results that I just executed. Oh, no. Okay, let me go to the previous results. Okay, I don't know what happened. Uh, so this is the original MRI, and this is, I think, iterative soft thresholding, I guess. I'm not sure, but there's no AMP for sure. This one has AMP, and it has the best 
performance. And again, uh, all these three are recovered from this input subsampled version of this original uh, MRI. Uh, so, as the last point, uh, I can share uh, this big picture link. Uh, in on this website, uh, we can find all uh, papers, research groups, uh, and uh, codes regarding sparse recovery. Some of the links are outdated, uh, but we just need to search them again on Google. Basically, these websites or zip files uh, have been moved to another server, uh, so they are still available. Uh, Yes, I think uh, this is all I want to say about. I hope uh, I wasn't, I didn't talk so confusing. Yeah, as you could notice, uh, I showed uh, things from multiple places. So that's why I couldn't make a smooth presentation. Uh, it's good if I had all these things on the on this presentation screen, but. Uh, I didn't want to spend time, so I just uh, opened different windows and uh, that's all.